All right, earlier this month I uh, got this awesome crescent moon setting over a blue bridge here in the Tri-Cities, Washington, and it generated a lot of interest. And I, I've made a lot of these moon set uh, composites before, um, and I've gotten a lot of a lot of people ask me how I do it, so I decided to make a video of it to show you what I do. Now tonight I went out to the to the freeway, kind of at the last second. I'm like, oh shoot, the moon's setting over the freeway. And I shot, I set up my tripod, well I set up my camera on a timer to shoot, take a picture every two seconds at 1.6 second intervals, 1.6 second exposures, two second interval. So it's a picture every two seconds and there's about 0.4 seconds gap in between each picture. So it's a ch ch just that's kind of how it was. And I have F8, ISO 640, and 116 millimeters. Now I like to shoot when I do the moon anywhere from about one usually about 120 to 135 but you know or one about 115 to 135 is what I like to do for the moon and um, I set up about an hour before the moon set and I like moon sets because you can kind of frame them and you can see them so you're like okay you know I can figure out okay the moon's right there and I want to get it setting over the sitting over the freeway so you can kind of set up and frame it a little bit better than a moonrise. Moonrise you just kind of get lucky a little bit. You know there's a way to kind of know but it's you know where it's going to come up but you never really know where it's going to come up. So with the moon I ended up taking 1400 pictures of it um, at a two second interval over the course of an hour and what I do to make the uh, composite is I've learned that at about 120 to 115 to 120 millimeters if you take every 80th picture, you will. Um, I, I'll go through in Lightroom and I'll select every 80th picture. And the first thing you got to do, though, is you have to enable profile collect correction. Now I've already gone ahead and done this because this was a little bit of a nightmare to composite. For the sake of demonstration, I spared you the half an hour that I sent, spent trying to figure out how to which pictures were going to make the composite work fine because there's a lot of oncoming traffic and they really screwed up the picture really bad, but. I got them all. I got, I found about, no, 17 pictures that work for it. So what you do is you enable your profile correction and then go ahead and sync that to all of the pictures that you have selected. Now I'm going to make a time lapse out of this so they're all synchronized already. And that way everything, every picture is equal. So then what I do is I take, I start, okay, this is number 613. This is the picture that's selected right now. And you add 80 to that. So you go up, you scroll through until you get 693. And I hit 693, but it was really, yeah, there was a little bit too bright of a light on the background or something like that. I don't know why, but I usually... On this, I skipped, and it doesn't have to be precisely 80. Like, if you have every 80th picture, it'll be a very even gap in between the moons. That's what we're trying to do. So you have a moon, then a little gap, and then the moon, a little gap, and a little moon, a little gap, just like, just like my picture. But for the sake of this one, I mean, it was a nightmare with this whole uh, freeway and all that. So I took and I went through and I got 80th ever about every 80th picture and then selected the next one which was here. And I went down to the next 80th picture. And now if you don't have traffic oncoming traffic in it, you can just pick every 80th picture. If there's nothing moving in front of your screen, just grab every 80th picture. But I wanted ones that didn't have the lights like some of these some of these images were like nightmarish like right here you'd have the oh completely blown out and you know that it'll work for the composite but this will all be it'll just ruin the picture so then I took that and I went through and I got every 80th picture all the way through and you know all the way down to the end of it and I ended up having 17 of them selected and once you get all your pictures every 80th picture selected you go and you grab one of them usually either the first or the last I'll grab the first one here and you right click on it, go up to edit in, and then don't edit, don't open, don't open it here. You gotta send it to over to Photoshop as layers. So open as layers in Photoshop, um, and that will load it into Photoshop 
over here. And this will have it all down. You'll have a nice uh, lineup of pictures like that. Okay, you'll have this whole lineup of pictures like this. And it takes, a, you know, you've got, what, 17 uh, raw files. And that'll take a few seconds to load. I just kind of paused it while it loaded. And now, once you have them over here, this, these are all opened up in layers. And if you don't know about, much about Photoshop, like I don't, um, these are called layers. Anyway, you hold down the Shift key, and you'll select all but the bottom one. And I don't know why, but that's how it works. You select all but the bottom one. And then you'll come up to where it says normal here. You click on that. And you go down to where it says lighten right here. Click on that. And bam, you've got a composite. And that just adds light, to the light from every picture and puts them into a nice composite. And that is basically how it's done. Now there's a little bit of a mess here with the lights. And I might try and add a composite like I've take a, taken a blank image and I want to try and maybe just you know an empty road image and maybe just add that to the bottom half of it but for, for this for this purposes I'll just go ahead and edit this one and after you've done this you um, I'll hold down the control key or the command key and select the very bottom one and that will that will allow me to have them all selected and then you right click on it and go down to merge layers and that'll Put them all together. And then from here, I want to send it back into Lightroom. So you just go File, Save. And it'll take it right back into Lightroom. And then, and then make you try and find it. Where is it? Right there. There it is. And sometimes it'll drop it right in the middle of it, and I'll spend 20 minutes trying to find it. But here it is. Now we're back in Lightroom. And then we can go through and do a basic edit. Um, I shot this a little too warm for my taste, so I'll just drop down. This is just my basic edit from here on out. But you now, once you get to this point, you can just I'll just run run it through my basic uh, edit. Bring up the whites. Da, da, da. I go down to my camera calibration and do my little magic there. Run it through. This is just a really basic rough edit. There we go. I like to change the hue of the oranges just to make that. And then I had dropped my highlights a little too much. And this is all just basic, you know, editing, tweaking. I'm running through it pretty fast just for the purposes of this video. Clarity really brings out the moon. Check that out. You know, without it, you. you Sometimes clarity really enhances the light that goes, you know, that comes into the picture. And you can see here, there's not an even gap in between these these moons. But oh my gosh, it was a nightmare with the stupid, with the freeway. I mean, just wasn't ideal. But uh, yeah, that's basically how it's done. And then you can go ahead and export, and you've got a nice picture.